Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss return on investment known as ROI. ROI tells us the percentage of money gained or loss in relation to your initial investment. So simply put, you put $5, you take out 10. This is the initial investment, 5, and you end up with 10. So what is your return on investment? So how much did you put in versus how much you took out? Obviously, if it's a positive, if you receive more money than you, than you put in, it's a positive ROI. If you put in five and you receive three, then it's a negative or a loss ROI. Now, in, specifically in this session, in addition to learning how to compute that percentage, we need to know the tax effect. Also, we need to know how long it took you to earn that percentage. In other words, did you wait five years to go from $5 to $10? Or did you do this in two years? Or did you, this, did you do this in one year? You need to annualize the return because when you are measuring an investment, the time frame has to be comparable. And this is what we will discuss in this session. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. First, let's officially calculate the ROI. Just make sure we know how to do this. So what we said is you take your initial investment and you subtract it from the final value. Subtract your initial investment. Let's assume you contributed 100,000 and your final investment is 125. You find the difference, the difference is 25,000. It means your investment grew by 25,000. Now you will take the difference, 25,000, and you'll divide by the initial investment. The difference is 25, divide by the initial investment of 100,000 equal to 0.25. You multiply it by 100 or just simply put percentage, 25%. That's a great, that's ROI, 25%. Question becomes, how long it took you to earn this 25%? So this calculation, does not consider the time period over which the investment is held. And that can be crucial to compare two investments. Well, if I made an investment and I earned 25% in one year, this is totally different if I made an investment and I had to wait three years to earn 25%. Those are not the same. So what do we have to do? We have to learn how to annualize the rate in case the investment is taken longer than one year. So the annualized rate of return on the investment is indeed a more comprehensive and comparable measure. Because when you look at ROI, the assumption is this percentage is yearly, but you cannot always assume that. Somebody told you I made an investment and I earned 40%. Well, the next question should be, is this 40% annually or 40% over the period you were invested? And if, so, if that's so, what is the period? I need to know, I need to convert your 40% into an annual return so I can compare your performance to my annual return. So the annualizing the return take into account the compounding effect over time. And this is what the formula would look like. It would look like you'll take the final value of the investment, you divide it by the initial investment, then you raise it to the one over N, we're gonna see what N is, minus one, and you multiply by 100%. So the final value of the investment is how much you received at the end of the period. In our example, that was the 125. The initial investment is what you invested originally, was 100,000, N is the number of years held in the investment. So one divided by N, N is how long it took you, to earn this money and is the period minus one multiplied by 100%. Now let's take a look at the at an example to see how it works. Let's assume Emily invests $5,000 in a mutual fund. Three years later, she received or she cashed out 6,500. Calculate her ROI or she, their value is 6,500. What is the, what's the rate of return? What's the ROI? What's return on investment? per year. Well, let's look at the formula. The final investment is 6,500. The initial investment is 5,000. Well, 
and the number of years is straight. Now we are ready to plug everything into the formula to annualize the return. The formula is ratio of final investment to initial investment, so 6,500 divided by 3, that is approximately 1.3131, depending how much you want to round. So we found this part here of the formula. Then we're going to take this amount, this is the ratio that indicates how much the investment has grown, almost 30%. Then we're going to take 1.13 divide, um, not divide, raised, raised to the one third, raised to the one third, and that's going to give us 1.13. 09139. Then we're going to take this number, minus 1, this number, minus 1, and we're going to multiply it by 100% to get a percentage. And now we know the annualized return for Emily is 9.14. So Emily could say, I earned, my investment is earning 9.14% per year. Now she can look at other alternative investment to compare how much other investments are given her in relationship to her investment. So this is why you want to annualize the return. Otherwise, here's what's going to happen if we compute ROI without doing so. Her profit is 1,500, 1,500. We're going to take 1,500 and we're going to divide this by the initial investment to kind of compute the basic, not the basic, the ROI without taking the time period. And that's going to say, well, I earned 30%. If Emily says I earned 30% and you did not question her, like over how, how long, you, if you assume it's a year, 30% is totally different per year than 9.14, what she's really earning 9.14, not 30%. Now we always assume, if we are not told otherwise, we could always assume it's a year, but you cannot make this assumption, especially in the, in the real world. That's a great 9.14, but is this the true return? And the answer is not. Why? Because after you earn money, after you have a return, what do you have to do? You have to pay taxes. Therefore, we have to take the impact of taxes on your return on investment. Because guess what? You made a dollar of profit. Guess what? The government's going to take part of it. So this is going to be tax. So what's left, if they took 20%, what's left is 80%. What's left of the dollar is 80 cent. So what's your true return? Your true return is not a dollar. Your true return is 80 cent because the government shared that 20 pennies with you. So taxable earning and capital gain. When you earn income or make a profit from selling an investments, these earnings are subject to tax. Simply put, the taxes you pay gets deducted. It are reduced. The taxes you pay such as income taxes or capital gain tax, reduce the actual return. So Emily earned 9.14 gross, then she's going to have to subtract the tax effect of that. So to get to a more accurate measure of your investment performance, you should calculate the after-tax ROI. And this is important because let's assume you invest in the U.S. and you have an investment that's paying you 10%. Then you invest in Japan and you have an investment earning you 10%. Those may not be the same. Why? because the US tax rate is different than the Japanese tax rate. So you have to compare your investment after you look at the taxes. So this involves adjusting ROI calculation to deduct the taxes. Maybe in the US you pay 30%, so you end up with 0.7. Maybe in Japan you only pay 20%, you end up in 0.8 or 8%, 0.08 uh, and 0.07, 7% and 8%. Well. 7% now is different than 8%, although you started at the beginning as 10%, but after you take taxes into account. Also, certain investments you don't pay any taxes on. For example, if you invest in tax-exempt municipal bond, you don't pay any taxes. Therefore, if someone earned 10% on a US, uh, US corporate bond and another individual earned 9% on tax-exempt you might be saying, well, hold on a second. The U.S. corporate bond is earning 10. The tax exempt is earning 9. It must be the U.S. corporate bond is better. Well, after you pay your taxes, let's assume you have to pay 30%. What's left if you have to pay 30% of this? What's left is 7%. And you have to pay zero on the tax exempt. What you end up doing is the tax exempt is better because after taxes, you kept the 9%. U.S. corporate bond, you did not. So the scenario you have to take into account also if your investment is taxable or not, because if it's not taxable, you keep the full amount. Let's take a look at an example. Assume Jordan invests 20000 in a mutual fund. During the year, he received 2000 in interest income from his investment. 
and he's subject to 20% tax rate. What is his, first of all, what's the return on investment? The return on investment is 10%. He received 2,000 out of, his profit is 2,000 out of 20,000, which is 10%. Now, is it net 10%? Not at all. Remember, Jordan is subject to a 20% tax. Therefore, what do we have to do is this. There's more than one way to compute this. I'm going to give you the formula. The formula is you take the ROI, you take the return times 1 minus the tax rate. 1 minus the tax rate is 0.2, which left is 0.8. So 10% times 0.8, what's left is 8%. So what's left for Jordan is only 8% of his investment. Another way to look at this is to say, okay, uh, Jordan added 8,000 to his taxable income. He has to pay 20% in taxes. It means he has to pay $400 in taxes. Now, if he earned 2,000, then he deducted 400 for taxes. What's left for Jordan is 1,600. Now, guess what? Now, if we take the 1,600, the after-tax return divided by the initial investment will get to 8%. So whether you want to do it in a dollar amount, figure out the dollar and, you know, figure out your return, or you can take the rate of return times one minus the tax rate, because you take the tax rate out, what's left. So of the 10%, what's left for you is 80% out of it, which is 8%. That's all what we're saying here. Let's look at a comprehensive example. Alex buys a rental property for 300,000. In year four, Alex sells the property for 450. Alex marginal tax rate is 25%, but the long-term capital gain tax rate is 20%. So how much is he going to pay in taxes? Be careful. This is a property. Long-term, the 20% will be applicable. Let's first look at the net gain. The net total gain of the investment is 150, which is 450 minus 30,000. Let's compute the taxes because what Alex has to do is pay taxes on this 150. Well, the long-term capital gain is 20%. So we're going to take 150,000 take out of it 20%, Alex will have to send the government a $30,000 check. So after the tax, the net gain is 120. So this is the net gain. So basically what we did is now we figure out the net gain. So what is the after tax ROI? Well, if we take 120 divided by 300,000 times 100%, the ROI for Alex is 40%. But this is the ROI for four years. This it's not comparable because when you look at your investment, you want to know how you earn per one year or you want to find another investment that earn over four years. So, so you want to annualize this rate. So to annualize the return, we're going to be using the formula. The total after-tax return, which we already know, it's 120. We computed in the prior slide, divided by the initial investment of 300,000 raised to the one divided by four minus one. And that's going to give us an annual return of 8.78. So if Alex wants to present his investment, he earned 8.78, but he earned that over four years, year after year after year, and that's compounding. So over four years, he earned 40%, but his annual return, now, now you remember Emily earned 9.14 annual. Now those two are comparable. Emily did better. Emily earned 9.14 per year. Alex is earning 8.78 per year. Let's take a look at one more example. Emily, an engineer, is considering investing in a, in a startup tech company. She planned to invest 75, and her investment is projected to grow to 95 in a year. Well, Emily's annual income placed her in a tax bracket of 32%, state 5, and she's going she's gonna to have to pay net investment income of 3.8%. So let's now calculate her rate of return and calculate after-tax rate of return. Well, let's calculate the rate of return first. Initial investment 75, she uh, 75, she expect to receive 95. That's a profit of 20,000. 20,000 divided by the initial investment, and that's 26.66%. Great. But that's before she pays her taxes. Now let's compute the after-tax return, ATRR. She has to pay 32 in taxes for federal uh, for the federal government five for the state, 3.8 to the uh, net investment income, which is technically the federal government. Overall, she's going to have to pay 40.8% of her return to the government. Not half, but close to half, 40%. That's a substantial amount. 
So to compute her after tax return, we'll take the 26.66 times 1 minus the tax rate equals 17.79 net return after tax. So notice this investment is better than the 9.14 this 8.78 because it's 17.79 that's the return after tax what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs that's going to help you understand this concept better you want to look at additional mcqs because learning how to do this is by computation practice 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 invest in yourself farhat lectures is here to help good luck study hard and of course stay safe